Hi, I'm, I'm Lynn Mayer with Pago with Life Force Arts Ensemble, and I'm here with Brian Fagan and Laura Joy. And we're here to share our experiences that we had with the Healing Arts Intensive Signet Soul, which we'll be doing again on Wednesday, March 3rd. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what a Healing Arts Intensive is, which I assume is pretty much everyone on the planet, um, it is actually the culmination of 35 years of work by Joan Forrest Mage, who is the founder and executive director of Life Force Arts Foundation. Um, on the healing potential of art. So it is a six session group therapeutic process over a period of six weeks, uh, no more than eight participants. So you get like really a good group dynamic uh, with the other participants. And it's really based on the visual literary and performing arts and shamanic practice and a sound healing performance by Life Force Arts Ensemble as well. So I'll drop the link to that in the comments a bit later, but just want to thank you guys, uh, Brian and Laura, for coming to this Facebook Live on short notice, and to thank everyone who is um, here watching. So, so um, yeah, it's just been a pleasure to experience uh, the this kind of healing and transformation and this kind of work with both of you. So just wanted to ask a few questions. What um, originally interested you in coming to this Healing Arts Intensive? Um, Joan, Joan had reached out to me um, because I had been in, uh, she did a soul retrieval for me. So she's like, hey, would you be interested in this? And I was like, sure. Um, because I told her that I was interested in the arts and all of that. So um, I was like, okay, I had no idea really what I was walking into. But um, I mean, I'm all about it. So <laughs> I'm very happy okay. that I, did it. I just kind of did it kind of on a spur of the moment thing and intuition. So it was very nice that she reached out to me with me in mind <laughs> about the for the healing. All right. Very cool. Thank you for that. <clears throat> um, I also did a soul retrieval with Joan. And um, I when it was when the soul retrieval was done, I, I don't know, do the uh, do the people watching this know what that is, Lynn Mayo? Probably not. So soul retrieval is basically, a, it's a shamanic healing. And what happens is that in our life, uh, the soul can be lost through traumatic experiences that happen. Uh, usually you will not need more than one soul retrieval in a lifetime. It's kind of one of the most effective um, forms of healing that there is. So what it, what it is is a shamanic practitioner will do a journey to retrieve whatever the soul parts are that went missing and then after that, you've got to kind of do the work to keep them happy so that they stay and don't leave again. Mm. Is that pretty much like how that, that went for you? That, that was yeah. my experience, yeah. And uh, I, I did the soul retrieval with Joan, and it, I had no idea what I got out of that retrieval. I just knew that something felt really different. And okay. when Joan explained to me about the healing arts intensive, I'll be honest, when she sent it to me, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what I was looking at when I was looking at the, uh, the pamphlet for it and the information about it. But I also trusted, uh, based on that soul retrieval, that there is something that uh, Joan was providing that uh, did hit me in a way I couldn't really explain. So um, I took the leap of faith and enrolled in the class. Okay, very cool. Thank you for that. Um, so when you took that leap and, and, and got in the class, uh, what, what did you think that you were getting into? <laughs> I, I don't know, and I'm still not sure what I got into. <laughs> okay. Um, I knew that it was art-based. I knew from Joan's background, uh, she comes from an art background, and that fused with the shamanic work and the training that she's become, you know, she's mastered over the years. So I knew it was some kind of fusion with that. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I've, I've come from uh, a psychological and counseling profession, um, very deeply involved in uh, Carl Jung's psychology. So uh, I knew that there was something that about touching the soul that needed to happen. And I knew that art had a big piece to do with it. And I've never seen a framework like this before. And mm -hmm. uh, so I knew that there was something here that Joan had that was special. And I also went into this with the, with the idea that I'm not going to try to think myself into what I need done. 
I'm going to kind of let this experience take over. Cause like, I went into this thinking that that's probably the best way of doing it. Okay. Very cool. How about you, Laura? Unmuted. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So, uh, what I thought it was going to be right. That was the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. You're setting yourself into. Okay. So, um, I wasn't sure, like, I wasn't sure if it was going to be like an arts intensive, like, um, okay, all day we're going to be painting for three hours or all day we're going to be drawing for three hours. And, um, it's not that, which is fine. It's great. Um, it's because my mind is always in the fine arts because that's what I did in school and everything. So I'm like, okay, what is this going to be? But, um, it's really introspective, kind of almost like a spiritual group therapy and it's so healing and so lovely and everyone just kind of commiserates together and it's very nice and um yeah <laughs> it's um and they're like we kind of incorporate our own creativity into it like you don't have to be an art major or anything like that to participate in this arts intensive um if you are cool if you're not also cool um you can be creative in any sort of way and like release what you need to release and I don't know, embrace what you need to embrace. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that. Totally. I have the same experiences as like I know that I <laughs> when I'm drawing in the healing arts intensive, like it looks like a giant scribble of who knows what. And like that's totally fine. <laughs> like there's still like something that comes out of that. Um, so did it go beyond at all what you thought it would be? Or if so, how? Um, I think so, yeah. Um, because there was a lot that happened for me. Like in the moment during class, um, there was a lot going on, a lot I was absorbing, but I wouldn't really have any sort of, I don't know. Uh, I don't, it's hard to explain because like I didn't things didn't really hit me until I was sleeping and I was okay. and like the next day I'd be like oh <laughs> things would start clicking and I'd wake up like feeling so different um and also if you hear any destruction going on behind me my cat has major zoomies right now and I have no idea okay. so he's going nuts <laughs> so I'm sorry about that if he's making a racket but um yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. So with expectations, uh, I, 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 I guess I went beyond my expectations, but at the same time, I don't think I could have had expectations for this. Mm -hmm. So it definitely turned into something that I don't think I could have imagined. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And um, actually very much like what Laura was saying, um, a lot of this stuff didn't hit me until later. And I think that's why there's something special about this healing intensive was that it's not, it's not a formula where I'm putting two and two together in my head. It's something that I definitely absorbed over those couple of weeks. And uh, like, I'll be honest, it's very hard doing this you know, Q and A interact, whatever we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah because it's hard to put into words why this worked <laughs> it okay did. it's also hard to explain what it was that needed to be worked but it mm -hmm. did um but definitely this was a, a a class that i definitely absorbed what was going on more than understood what was going on mm -hmm. yeah i feel like i've done these like a few times now and it's like like i still don't really understand what goes on like i just go with it <laughs> Yeah, spirit does what spirit does and what whenever spirit wants to. So I mean, it'll hit you then or whenever it wants to. Whenever you're the most absorbent of it, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And actually, that's that's a good point, Laura, because I think um one of the things about this healing arts intensive is it provides a container where the spirit can do what it needs to do yeah. without right. that judgment. And I, I feel that that's really what this was, was this was a container designed to let spirit come out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That is a 
great way to describe it. I'm going to have to write that down and put it in the. <laughs> well, you are, <laughs> you are recording this. I think I you're it. recording I, this. So. <laughs> yeah, it is going on Facebook Live, so it'll be out there on the internet forever. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> where are my questions? So, if you don't mind sharing, um, what was your transformational goal? And do you feel that you achieved it either within the six weeks or like sometime afterwards, or did it expand into a whole other thing? Um, I can jump. I guess I can jump in. I uh, well, do, do the uh, viewers know what a transformational goal is in this context? Probably not, and I should tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you're good at this. Um, a transformational goal is basically it's just it's an intention. You come to the healing arts intensive with an intention of something that you want to change and transform in your life, and it can be anything. And what I had was it could be like. Um, healing, learning, evolution, transition, personal growth, professional development. Um, I feel like there's another one, but I'm blanking on it. So if I think of it, I will put it in the comments. Um, yeah, when I came into this, um, my intention was to have no intentions and was to just kind of open myself up to this. And I uh, Joan, in her very polite, spiritual manner, made made it clear that that wasn't going to fly. So I had to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was very funny because then I came up with one and then I realized, oh, I think she just bullied me into having an intention. OK, <laughs> um, but uh, no, and I'm glad that she did. And what I came up with that did occur was uh, to reduce cynicism because um, I came into this knowing that this was going to be a spiritual experience. And cynicism is, is the enemy of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, that's a big thing. Hold on. I don't know what I just did here, but cool. Thank you for that. What about you, Laura? Uh, for me, I so far I've done two of these. Um, I did the Signet Soul last year and um, I did Selkie just a couple weeks ago, we finished up. Um, and for Signet Soul, for me, it was uh, to release self-hatred and to, you know, okay. kind of grow and embrace self-love um, within all of that, because it was about, I think the main story was um, about the ugly duckling mm -hmm. and growing within that story, um, or with that story in mind and everything. And then for Selkie, um, it was to release what was no longer serving me and um, you know like shed the skin that um, is not me and to kind of go out into the world as my true authentic self so um, they're very self-positive at least the two I've experienced so far um, and I do want to take another one um, whatever I got to look into what's coming up next but um, yeah they're they're very great and very healing if you're if the pandemic's getting to you, I highly recommend this. <laughs> It'll, it, it helps. So yeah, I do feel that. And thank you for bringing up the ugly duckling. I realized that I didn't mention that there are four healing arts intensives and they all like, well, there's going to be a lot more than four, but, and there, there have been more, but like with this current exhibit that we have, which is the soul's essence there for, uh, so Signet Soul is about the story of the ugly duckling, which is about the person who doesn't know who they are because you're born into a situation which everyone around you is not what you are and they're telling you what you are and they're not right. And like, that was, I related to that a lot as a transformational goal. I heard that, I was like, oh, I need to do this because that's my life. And um, so that is Signet Soul. Selkie was the next one in that series, which is about the person who knows who they are, but something happened and who you are got stolen from you. And then it's about reclaiming that essence of who you are. Um, next one is Isadora, which I haven't done yet. And that one is the person who always knew who they were and um, basically lives your life as that fully realized soul's essence, regardless of what anyone else thinks or says, which is kind of like Isadora Duncan's life as a dancer really exemplified that. 
And then the next one, the fourth one is Mask of the Sun King, which is a person, it's when you know who you are and then you can like play with them, like use the mask to enhance who, who your soul's essence is like while you're out in the world. So that's, that's all of them. I don't know what we have scheduled right now. We have a signet soul scheduled for starting next week. The rest of them, if you think about doing another one or if anyone's thinking about it, just call us. <laughs> Let me know when it's good and we can probably make it happen. So um, there's that. So, and Laura, I meant to ask you earlier, do you, were you part of the shamanic training program at any point? I was not, but I would like to be. <laughs> okay, well, that's starting tonight. Um, sensing energy. So if you want to do it, just call Joan. Like, <laughs> uh, right. But like, she does level one like every so often. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so are you familiar with the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic modes of perception? Yes, that's a fancy way of saying, yeah, uh, visual movements and, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, forgot my train of thought, it just zoomed <laughs> right off the tracks. <laughs> that's okay. My next question just kind of relates to that, and I realized, like, she talks about that in the shamanic training, and I'm like, I don't know if everyone has been through that, but because we do, we combine the visual, literary, and performing arts in the intensive. So I just want to know if you have different kind of responses to each different type of art, either in general or in the context of the healing arts intensive. Yeah, I, I definitely do. Um, I think I, the visual really speaks to me the most, uh, specifically uh, the literary, something about seeing the words on the page. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's for me, there's something more intimate about having a relationship with an author than uh, any other type of artist. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting. I, know I won't go in too deep in the weeds on this, but it, somebody else also told me one time that uh, literature is the only form of art that demands the audience to have a skill. Yet you have to read. And there's something that really creates a stronger relationship with the artist and the, uh, the participant, the viewer, the mm -hmm. audience when you actually have to come with us with an actual skill. Um, so I definitely have gotten that, you know, it's funny with the kinesthetic. Um, yeah, I, I could care less about actually touching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't really get much out of it. I feel like my imagination is actually kind of dampened if I'm actually touching it. It's almost like, Oh, this is taking the, my imagination out now. Cause now I know what this is. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, you know, ripping the curtain, side and actually seeing what's going on underneath and frankly with with the imagination being taken out it takes the spirituality out for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's interesting how about you laura for me um at least with these uh process processes um i want to say i've kind of started embracing the kinesthetic mm -hmm. like the movement and everything um yeah, like doing like different yoga poses and just embracing like the breathing. That's been really, I don't know, that's that's changed a lot for me. I know like a lot of people are like, do yoga, it'll like change your life. But, <laughs> right, you're like, what? Like, yeah, <laughs> but um, for me, it's really helped with my anxiety and um, it's helped me with uh, kind of clearing my head and focusing on the intentions I've set for these classes. And um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And I'm a visual artist, so I, I always lean towards visual learning and mm -hmm. everything like that. So if it's if it's art, I'm all about it. Okay. <laughs> Especially the, the visual arts. Mm -hmm. I have a very big connection with that. I think in pictures. That's amazing. Laura, what type of art do you do specifically? Like more specifically. Uh -oh. I'm putting you out there right now, if you don't. Oh, that's fine. Um, my computer kind of froze for a second. Well, what did you just ask? Oh, I said, what kind of art do you do specifically? Oh, um, I don't think I've seen 
like yeah, I, I paint, I paint, I illustrate. Um, I don't really have an online presence yet. I'm working on it, but um, yeah, I, I like I like doing a lot of stuff. But currently, right now, I've been doing a lot of like color pencil and pencil illustrating and uh, painting with acrylics. I've also painted in oils. I'm still trying to get a hang of watercolor, but it'll it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> I have feelings about watercolor because I've yeah, <laughs> watercolors its own little beast <laughs> it's so interesting that both of you are talking about visual but in very different ways yeah um, and like i am like super super kinesthetic it's like if i don't actually physically do something like it's not going to sink in at all i'm not going to learn anything so i need to keep myself like moving throughout anything that i try to try to do which i think is like how i end up like being a dancer and doing those kind of things. So, but like, that's the whole, that's the whole thing. Um, well, that's also it, what's, what's great about the, 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 um, the Cygnus soul and all the healing arts intensives is, uh, you know, Joan definitely introduces you to all those different types right. of art. And I know for me, like with the dance, it never would have even occurred to me that that would be something that would um, appeal to me at all or get <laughs> anything out of just like a, you know a dork but um i i definitely got something out of it and while it's not the one that i naturally gravitate to it did open up another avenue of uh healing that i would not have even occurred to me to check out yeah. you don't have to be a dancer to take the class <laughs> no no, like, no 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 yeah no. i am like the <laughs> least amount of agile so like you, it's just it's very spiritual and very I don't know mindful of the movements so it's more mm -hmm. like kind of closer to Tai Chi in a way I want to say mm. um but yeah I mean it really depends on what you're doing but mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah I, I think you could even argue it would probably be better if you weren't a trained anything <laughs> and just <laughs> I mean it's just a blank slate Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't have to move until week six generally. Oh. <laughs> so I think with selfie it was a different, but like, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, I was gonna go off on something. So, as far I think we were talking about the different modes of perception, and I could go off and like geek out on this for a long time, and I'm not going to. But as so, part of the healing arts intensive includes a performance. Um, which we were just kind of briefly going into. Uh, the performance is kind of interesting because what happens is that throughout the, the weeks that are leading up to the performance, actually the participants in the Healing Arts Intensive will do things like select the spirit guides that they resonate with. There are always like some spirit guides associated with each intensive to begin with, but you bring your own spirit guides to it as well. And if you don't have any spirit guides, that's fine too. I usually don't bring any, um, but it's really cool when you have the opportunity to do it. And um, so that's how the that's how you would participate in the performance. You bring spirit guides to invoke. Then we also do writing in one of the sessions, which the writings get read usually by Apollo um, in the performance, which they do a really great job of dramatizing it. And um, also there may be, you may choose, sometimes the participants choose a song that gets sung in the performance. I don't think that happened in like the ones that we have been to, like there was, they used a song, but it wasn't one that we had selected, but that does happen um, sometimes. So what was the, how did the performance affect your healing, like as a participant, like watching the performance. I'll go. Um, watching it, it was okay. So for, so for Signet Soul, I had no idea what I was about to witness. And I remember early on, Joan was talking about this performance. I'm like, oh no, are we performing? <laughs> and I was so nervous. I didn't know what was happening. And then, um, but don't worry if you're taking the courses you're not performing at all <laughs> it's um, you're you're an observer and um joan and everyone at life force arts they um they perform together and it's like um 
I don't know. It's like this dance and this performance with the story and it, um, I don't know. I feel like it reaches out to every aspect, like the visual, the audio, the audio, the, um, like everything. Um, so it like kind of ticks every box, at least it did for me. And, um, it just kind of helps, it helped me release what I needed to release. Um, and it helped me also welcome in what I needed to heal. So at least that was my experience with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was very cool. I like how you brought up about releasing and bringing in because that is like all healing is yeah. you're getting rid of something and bringing in like a whole other thing that you want. Positive to heal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you, Brian? Well, like Laura, I was worried that they were going to make us perform. And uh, I, I really did think that. And I was very nervous. I even, I even think I talked to my mom about that saying, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> um, but uh, it was, so watching the performance, um, so throughout those couple of weeks of my experience in the intensive, uh, kind of like the center of what I was working on ended up coming out as a poem that I wrote. And that was kind of crystallized my experience. And um, part of that poem was used in the performance. And like Laura was saying, you know, there was, it was auditory, it was visuals, kinesthetic, dancing, music, the poems being read, it was everything. To describe it would really not do it justice uh, at all. And um, I noticed that throughout the performance, pieces, pieces of my poem were sprinkled in. Not the whole poem, but pieces of it. And it was interesting because... And I think on any other platform, this would sound pretentious, but I think on this platform, it actually is very appropriate. Um, It was like watching a piece of my own soul on display. And actually watching that in that form with these professionals uh, actually performing this and not seeing the whole piece, but just pieces of it, it Mm -hmm. really was like looking into the mirror of a part of me that I can't really see or explain. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was, it was turning everything I'd been doing those couple of weeks, putting it in front of me. Uh, it, it was, it was shockingly powerful because I really was not, I didn't have any high expectations that I was going to get anything out of it. Uh, but it was very powerful. Yeah, I found that too. Cause, um, <clears throat> when I did Signet Soul, they, um, and I found like there was so, there was more with writing the poem and that kind of like just the process of writing it like kind of shifted things out of me. Then when I heard it in the performance, I was like, oh my God, like I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really cool to, to have them do it. But I might be the only one who was like, what do you mean we're not performing? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> but that's why I end up being in um, Mask of the Sun King. So that's fun times too. It's really different because um, yeah, most of the, and what's going to happen is as we do more of these, we might end up having like different casts and different performances. But right now, it is Apollo, Natalia, and Joan that are doing three of them. See, Selkie, Signet Soul, and um, blanking, Isadora. And Mask of the Sun King is different people. So it's Joan, Apollo, James, Cheyenne, and me. I think James is there sometimes and not all the time but it's always really interesting like I did I went to see and soul twice and it was completely different energy in the performance like each time that um but now I'm I'm kind of blanking on that so I'll ask something different um oh <laughs> Would you like to share the poem that you wrote, Brian, or not? Um, I can. Uh, how do you want to do that? Do I pull it up? You want me to read it? What do you? Uh, um, what works? You put it in the comments. Doesn't matter. I can't put it in the comments because I tried to do that and I failed. Um, but are, are what I can do is share, if you, if you can you share the screen, I can send it to you. I can share the screen because I have the program, so that is what I will do. I'll find it. So give me five. Okay. You want me to resend it to you? No, I've got it because it was in the. I think it was. Yeah, it's in the program. So. 
Okay. Okay, we're going to share the screen right now. So here we are with you um you want me to read it to give it a little bit more drama? Definitely. All right. You let me know when you want me to start. All right now. Okay. So this is called the totems of my youth. The desert of my youthful dream, an antique land that does not breathe. I always awake in this yellowed land when my present becomes too obscene. Abandoned pedestals pox to the sand, once holding religious idols, rotating beacons of the land, now residing in shallow graves of yellow. Mustering maturity, I ask aloud, why am I here? This empire is past and dead, a land for the ghosts to claim. The land buries itself. The western wind, who resides at that unreachable place at the bottom of the horizon, speaks. Empires come and empires go, but land is forever, don't you know? Wow, that, that totally took me back. I remember like after it was like the first day that you wrote that poem, then like I dreamed about pedestals in the sand for like nights after that. <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. <laughs> That's okay. No, I love it. Like I, I, I feel like your poem, like that, that shifted something in me too. Like just as much as um, like anything that I did in the intensive or anything the, the performance did, so or the performance performers. Um, and if I can say one thing about it, you know, part of this experience was not only just writing this, but sharing it in that space was so different from any other writing I've ever shared in any other. A platform. Um, we weren't there to critique. We weren't there to applaud. It really was everybody was just absorbing what everybody else was doing. And actually, what you just said about dreaming it uh, just proves that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I was totally going to avoid this, but I'm going to share mine because <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair since I put you on blast. So, um, so mine was. Dragonfly becomes a helicopter high over a solar system of rotating jack-o'-lanterns. A little girl working with her hands, playing with toy cars on a track. Possibilities of intelligence, fast as a sky, misapplied to make, make beautiful something that was never ugly to begin with. I could have just walked straight out of the open door of my heart and been on my path already. My path leading through the marginal lands next to highway entrances of tunnels of night, mysteries of the Midwestern suburban landscape, now paved over, covered in monoculture grass, but the lens mystery still beckon. A commandment, ignite the awareness of the mystery in every human heart. The dominant beliefs, those vast historical estates were overlaid by their creators on the true reality. We have the same right. Claim the huge, beautiful tracts of land that await our creative call, our care and our cultivation. Write your own stories on this planet. Um, for me, I'm like, <laughs> like this is basically just a um like a job description <laughs> like Lynn you have to go do this with your life now so that was interesting to have that come out during the healing arts intensive and thank you for sharing that Brian with yours uh Laura did you have um any writing that you had done that you were that you'd like to share um I don't <laughs> I'm sorry about that but yeah a lot of it was um it was more like automatic writing for me um, mm -hmm. and nothing that I really shared because I didn't, I don't know, I, I felt, uh, I don't know, I didn't have it really picked apart where I felt it was shareable. I can relate. Like in yeah. the last one, like I had nothing that was like fit for public consumption. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I mean, good. yeah. I did do a lot of sketches before, but I mean, aside from that, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for that. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do right now, and I wish I could drop the link. Well, I, I will share it on the screen. That's what I'm going to do for the featured artwork from Signet Soul. And, um, which I think is somewhere on, uh, not here, not here either. Um, 
Well, the question is, were there any of the featured artworks that like spoke to you specifically? Um, and I should probably explain what featured artworks are um, for each of the healing arts intensives and each of the performances. We feature several artworks from our current exhibit, which is the soul's essence. And um, sometimes they change with um, different times that we do it. Sometimes like a participant will resonate with an artwork that may not have been featured. So then we just go ahead and feature it. And I'm trying to find that and I had it up and now I don't. So, but do you remember like any artworks that, that had jumped out at you at the time? Yeah, I can jump in. Um, the pieces that really stuck out to me, the one piece was, uh, it was called Singing in the Sacred Grove. And um, it was. Uh, I'm gonna find it. Yeah. I mean, the, the colors were ridiculously vibrant on it. There it is. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's by Shauna Ora Knight. Yeah. So it's interesting because I actually, what hit me about this was that I, you know, we did this all on Zoom. Um, so I only saw it the third panel, the one on the far right. I didn't actually see the whole uh, uh, triptych. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at that, I think if you go over one, the next one is what I actually saw. Okay. Yeah. This one. Yeah. That's the one. So here's the funny thing. I, I saw this and I did not see a swan until it was pointed out to me. I thought that was a tree. And I saw the roots and I saw the branches and I just, I, I saw that as the tree of life. And when I realized that it was a swan, it really, for some reason, the idea of merging a, the plant and the animal just made it that much more rich. And I'll be honest, I can't explain why, but it really did move me. And um, the colors in particular just really explode off of this canvas. And um, it's one of those, th it's a great example of why this healing arts intensive worked for me was that I can't explain what's going on, but it really does hit me in my core. Mm -hmm. Often um, Joan will point the camera so that she has that piece behind her. And I love like <laughs> just seeing it. Like if you ever have, if anyone ever has a chance to like actually see it in person because the exhibit is open even now by appointment, um, where do we do safe, like with the social distancing and everything. So um mm -hmm. If you'd like to, if anyone would like to see them in person, that can happen, can be arranged. So, um, cool, thanks for that, Brian. Uh, how about you, Laura? There we go. Um, for me, I know that triptych was one of them that I was interested in. I think mm -hmm. the lineup I had was slightly different because I was in a different, um, a different course than you two were. But uh, I think the I think the mask of the Sun King was it, was something okay. I was resonating with, even though it has nothing to do with the Signet Soul. But was it was it the other one? spoke to me uh, for the Signet Soul. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, there's like there's no rules to like choose the art, you know, for for yourself. But whatever works with you. And I think there was that orange one down there that Sally made, I believe, like with the- This one, uh, Essence yeah. of Islam? Yeah, yeah, that one spoke to me too. Yeah. Like, what, what did it say to you? Um, it just, it looked very similar to a dream, kind of like a recurring dream I had throughout like my teenagehood and kind of slightly into my adulthood that I've painted um, currently in storage. But um, I, yeah, so, it, it just looked very much like this dream I had, which also oddly enough is slightly similar to the to uh, Brian's poem, <laughs> which is wild. It's like this desert landscape with different like like sticks in the sand, like ped pedestals and such. Um, but instead of like yellow, it's red, like this painting, like a red desert, um, almost like Martian in a way. But um, but yeah, this one really was one of the ones that spoke to me because deserts <laughs> and it's just is where um where my soul goes it goes to um the red deserts and such if i remember cool. correctly this painting was a big um discussion point during the one that you yeah. were on 
Yeah, know, it was. We did, yeah. And I can't even remember how that discussion started, but like I have no idea. It, like jumped at it like many of us at one time. <laughs> we're like, okay, yeah. like we guess guess we gotta feature this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was super cool. Mm -hmm. So next question is so the aspects of the healing arts intensive are the arts, the transformational goal, and then also the life force arts method. How do you find that the life force arts method um, helped you, if at all, as part of the healing arts intensive? I'll share this. Okay. Do the viewers need a quick overview on what you're talking about? <laughs> life force arts method, I couldn't explain it if I tried. <laughs> Life Force Arts Method is really the, the work that Joan Force Mage has been doing over the last 35 years and developed. I should probably bring up a picture of the medicine wheel, except that I don't think I can find it, but it's based on like a modern version of a medicine wheel. Um, kind of like going to like the four directions in there. And the, with the wheel, um, basically anything, any question or problem that you have in life like can be answered like through the wheel and the life force arts method. So I having... found, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go on. I, I found with, um, with the wheel, uh, I remember when she showed it to us the first time, I had no idea what the hell I was looking at. <laughs> and, um, and it's interesting because I've also found, I've done a couple of courses or workshops or trainings with Joan. And you're right, it really does cover pretty much everything you can think of. Um, you know, when we were doing the healing arts intensive, it was all about the personal growth, you know, how do you learn? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's funny because now I look at it and I'm looking at the bigger context because it actually also includes the changes of the season too. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. really does kind of connect, you know, the individual to the greater universe in a, in a really beautiful way, actually. Um, it's incredibly multi-layered. There's so many layers. <laughs> I did it's find hard. it. Yeah. So I'm gonna share it. Here we go. Um, what about you, Laura? What did you find with the, um, the wheel and the life force arts method? Um, for Signet Soul, I forget which one that one. It was about sentience. Like knowing what you think and feel. All right. Yeah, in the water. And then I think Silky was osmosis, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just looking at the wheel, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's just, there's so much to it. Um, but yeah, it helps kind of carp, car, uh, comp <laughs> it helps kind of bundle everything together in your brain, uh, or at least kind of pick things apart. Um, at least for, uh, for me. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't have anything uh, specific I can share with my experience, but um, I really like how everything has an element to it and that it's related to um, the, uh, oh my gosh, my brain, I just, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sacred directions. Um, yeah, my it's the end of my work day, so my brain is mush. I apologize. <laughs> so, <That's all> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I do want to actually study this a lot more and get better acquainted with it, so that way I can talk about it. Yeah. So I don't know when Joan is going to start that life force arts method class that goes through the wheel in like great detail, but it's going to be soon. I think it's a 12 week class that she's going to be teaching. So, okay. 12 as soon as weeks. I find out, yes, 12 weeks. Wow, yeah. that, that speaks volumes about the detail in this wheel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know that for me, um, and especially Sigmund Soul, and actually a lot of the intensives that I've done have been really about sentience. And it's just always mind blowing to me being like a fully mature adult kind of age and like, realizing that I have no idea how I think what I think and feel <laughs> so I'm like yeah. Yeah. I'm not really taught like to know that in like greater society I don't think so I guess that's that's what I would say about that I think what's uh what's helpful with um because well first of all it helps having the wheel up thank you for pulling it up Lynn my um looking at the sentience which is where uh signal I took took 
kind of revolved around. You know, if you look at what's underneath it, the archetypes of sentience are artists, but it's also witness, um, which I found during my my intensive. And it sounds like from what the two of you have also said, it, I'm hearing it also from your experiences, is that that being a witness to other people's spiritual transformations is so crucial to your own. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. If I was doing this on my own, I'd be so lost. <laughs> <laughs> I had done I'm this really on my grateful. own and I was lost. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful that like Joan leads it and like we have this whole group that has a little bit more experience. And then there's some folks that are kind of like newbies like me. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's really great just to have that group mentality. It's like a little tribe and it's very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the tribe is definitely. Yeah. The tribe yeah. is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's like part of part of crystallizing the tribe and the sovereign which I have to like just say something about it because I love the tribe and the sovereign as archetypes because the tribe is a tribe of sovereigns hmm. kind hmm. of like how our country is like who's the sovereign of the United States of America it's not the president it's us hmm. um we the people so it's that kind of like everyone it's like while we may like be looking at an external authority like you're really your own authority as well that's interesting a tribe of sovereigns i don't know why that that, that hit me though that's what spirit do <laughs> that's, that's what spirit do. oh my god so here's like another major question so how do you find with the work that you do in your life with brian you being a therapist and laura being in the arts or i don't even know what you do for a day job or if you have one but <laughs> as far as the healing arts intensive how does that affect other work that you do other modalities of healing that you may be experienced with or just your day-to-day -day life on earth i feel like my dreams have become at least I'm starting to understand my dreams a bit better. Um, I've been studying dreams for, gosh, <laughs> since I was a young little teenager. Um, so yeah, just to say that it's, it's like, it's great. I love it. I love being able to understand my dreams better. Um, and my day job is I'm a customer account representative at, um, uh, a place that sells uh, siding. It's not very exciting. Um, so it's pretty much one of those cubicle jobs. But, That's exciting um, to me. <laughs> we all work from home. So I'm grateful for that. But um, it helps, like these courses have helped me embrace my mindfulness and my own self-worth. And um, at least just the two I've taken. So like I haven't I've been getting stronger in my day job and in uh, my night job, let's say, my, my painting and my artwork. Um, I feel like it's taken on more of a spiritual angle. So like I'm able to express how I'm feeling or like kind of let spirit work through me in these paintings in a way, um, which is really neat. And I like it a lot. <laughs> I can say, um, you know, I, I like like uh, Lin Ma, you like you said, you know, I'm a therapist. I, I work in mental health. I also work specifically in addictions, and you know, work like this, it's it's very easy, and you know, in the therapy profession, to look for uh, qua quantitative changes, things mm -hmm. that you can actually name and check off on your boxes. And work like this reminds me that there's so much going on underneath the surface that's growth that we can't see and not to discount that there is something good going on, even if I can't see it. So that's crucial <laughs> because I'm in a, I'm in a profession where nothing changes. Oh, we're going, we're going in crisis mode. We got to, we got to throw somebody an inpatient. We got to do this. We got to do that. And the reality is, no, we got to slow down and look at this from a much bigger, deeper place. Um, and the, you know, me doing this work myself, it's also allowed me to see that there's a lot going on underneath the surface with me. So I can, mm -hmm. I feel more at ease with trusting myself as a therapist, that there is a lot more I'm offering than just whatever book knowledge, um, I got stored up in my brain. 
Mm -hmm. a, a lot of trust. I, I, that's the word that I would come down to, a lot of trust. Yeah. Cool. I, I will say, I can't remember. I think my, my goal for Sigma Soul was more personal, but when I did the Goddess Descent like a year ago, more than a year ago at this point, um, that was all about professional like work relationships and like how to break out of a really dysfunctional kind of culture and a really dysfunctional way of seeing myself like as like a woman of color to be like, it's like, wait, no, like <laughs> I'm actually the same as anyone else. And like every like I should have like known that inside of myself, but I didn't. Like I thought that there was like my experiences in corporate America had like kind of told me that there are only certain roles that are appropriate for me, but it's, and like based on something other than my education and experience. So like, like that, that I feel like that allowed me to break out of that kind of way of seeing myself. Um, yeah. Um, in general, okay. Um, I think I just have one more question, which is, <laughs> What do you think about this whole thing being on Zoom? Like I doing the healing arts over Zoom. It's great <laughs> for the pandemic anyway. I mean, it's something that um, I feel would be a lot more powerful in person, but I'm so grateful that it's been available on Zoom within all this nonsense <laughs> that's going on in the world because it's reached out to so many people like myself that um wouldn't otherwise be able to attend which i think is phenomenal yeah i mean i can only echo that um i know i not in the signet soul cl uh, course but in another course that i'm doing with joan uh we had people from north carolina so pandemic aside it just allows for a w much wider you know, range of people to join. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the good does outweigh the negative. That being mm -hmm. said, um, I do think that the performance uh, suffers by not being in person. Yeah, that, that part, I do yeah. think, I mean, I, I hate to be critical, but it, it did suffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think doing the performances in person, I performed with Joan for a while, like I did it like 10 years ago, and it's like, what I loved about doing the performances in person was that it was like, like if you were watching it, like you could just get up and dance. That would be fine. Like, yeah. And I always do when I, even when I'm watching the performance, I'd be like, cause I can't, I can't help myself. I, I will get up and dance and sing and like have myself on mute with the, with the picture off. So no one sees it. <laughs> Well, I mean, that, that's a great way of putting it because, you know, that performance, I remember watching it on Zoom going, this feels like some kind of, uh, 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 what's the word, the uh, um, Bacchanal event. And I can only participate to a degree being on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you were there in person, it would be a whole new, whole new level of interaction. Yeah. Um, what was crazy that happened during that Sigmund Soul performance that we were in was like, I remember that I was like, at the mall in Florida with my dad, like during the thing, that's like, I fell off the Zoom altogether. And like, but even like, as I was like falling off the Zoom and just frantically trying to get back onto it, I was like, I felt the energy that was coming like from like whatever, you, whatever they were doing. And I came back, I was like, whoa, like something happened. That's kind of- Yeah, like the energy is there, which is wild. It's just like, even remotely, you know um like there might be some things my chair is rolling away um there might be some things where like I don't know since in my mind since I'm remote that don't hit me until like a day or two later because like it has to go through like spirit snail mail or something I don't know <laughs> spirit snail mail. <laughs> but like still it's like it's great like just to feel that energy even through Zoom or through a phone call or whatever, um, it's still there and it's still powerful. Awesome. Was there anything else that either of you would like to share before we close out for? I can't think of anything, I don't know. <laughs> it's great if you haven't tried one of these uh, art intensives and art intensives, I think 
you should. I think this is definitely worth worth the leap of faith. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Plus, Joan's great. Oh yeah, <laughs> she really is. Oh yeah, she is awesome. Well, thank you both for coming, and um, for those watching, thank you, thank you all for being here and. So Healing Arts Intensive Signet Soul is starting Wednesday, March 3rd, 7 to 9 p.m., six-week program. And there is the shamanic training program, Sensing Energy, which is starting tonight, like at 7 p.m. Central Time. So um, if you're interested in that, I'm going to drop both of those links in the comments. Um, the Healing Arts Intensive, I think, is a, like $180 early registrations until tomorrow. And the shamanic training, I don't know how much it is and I should, but I'll drop the link. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, thank you both and thank you all for watching and have a good rest of the night. You too. Thank you. Bye.